back. It is the Ray Lytle Show on 970 WMAI, the news and talk of Springfield. Good morning. So I have uh, a sidewalk chalker, a.k.a. a Occupy Springfielder, in the studio with me. Hey, tell everybody your name. Hey, Ray. My name is Drew Dzinskis. And you were one of the guys that talked at the uh, committee of the whole meeting last night for the city council. Yes, I did. Did you? Were you one of the guys that actually did the sidewalk chalking? Yes, sir. I am uh, currently awaiting my court date for a $500 fine uh, for vandalism is what I was cited for. So, all right, let's... Let me get into this 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 chalk. What did you guys? And it was down near Aaron Chalk's office, right? Yes, sir. Um, what did you put on this? What was on the sidewalk? What did you guys write? Well, I think maybe the the place to start with this story is the preface of why we were there in the first place. Uh, we uh, it was brought to our attention that there is a bill going through U.S. Congress right now, H.R. 3346, that would grant emergency unemployment benefits to two million Americans that will lose them yes. uh, after December 31st. So, following the Lincoln maxim of first determine something must be done and then determine how to do it, we began trying to figure out how we could get our message across to Congressman Shock and his constituents here in Springfield. Right. Um, and what we've been doing uh, around Springfield uh, as a form of protest uh, in front of big banks like Chase is writing on the sidewalk with chalk, uh, expressing our opinions. Never vulgar, never obscene, uh, but we express our opinions on, on the matter. So we decided to do that at Aaron Shock's office uh, in Operation Shock Chalk. So you guys, when you guys did it in, in front of Chase, there was no problem? No. Uh, the police did stop and talk to some members. Um, I've been talked to by the police about chalking, but we've never actually been told to stop. And what have they, what have they told you about the chalking? Uh, they come out and they tell us uh, how they don't like coming out there. They're getting complaints. They, sure. You know, they don't want to deal with it. Um, but as for the letter of the law, they don't seem to actually be able to pin down anything that we're guilty of, you know, right. in, that, in that regard. So uh, we... We're chalking at Aaron Schock's office um, at about 10 o'clock on Thursday night. We had been out there uh, already at about 4.30 chalking right. in full view of the office with protesters from the AFL-CIO uh, and the Central Illinois Trade and Labor Council. Um, we were not stopped from chalking then, and we were chalking messages like, Two million Americans are about to lose their unemployment. Don't let that happen. And uh, support H.R. 3346, extend UI benefits, things of that nature, you know, trying to raise awareness about the issue in the community. Right. Um, we had been chalking throughout the day uh, a couple of times, and it was washed off every time. However, we were never approached by the police. Uh, and at 10 o'clock, uh, an associate of mine and I, Jake uh, John Keating, Jr., he and I were uh, approached by a police officer who immediately said, get your hands behind your back, and then informed us that we were under arrest for chalking. He didn't, we weren't actually arrested, but we were informed immediately that we were under arrest. We were handcuffed and we were detained in police cars. And then written out your Yeah, they, it, took, it, it took them a while to figure out just what they were going to write us up for. And during that time, uh, two squad cars showed up in addition to the lieutenant that had busted us. Uh, uh, and they called in a police photographer to take scenes of or take pictures of the crime right. scene, uh, and then they brought out a fire truck to hose off the sidewalk while it was beginning to rain. What, but what, what was written? I mean, what, what did they? Or what, let me ask you this: the ticket was for what? Vandalism. The ticket was for vandalism. Yep. So it wasn't. What was being said? Well, that's where it starts to get a little a little gray, and we don't quite understand it either because, by definition, in the city ordinance, vandalism has to be permanent or damaging to the structure. It has to be spray paint or we have to be breaking something. That's why chalking is – chalk. we make our own chalk. It's water-soluble. Um, and we were writing things like – of, of – all the quotes that we had, we had one quote from Aristotle that was uh, that was washed away, and just a lot of things in support. So of it. there was nothing obscene. There was anything profane. It Absolutely was just... not. Maybe a little snarky. We did put jobs uh, 7,873 miles west that way, i.e. China. But right. Yeah. Uh, uh, other than that, no. Uh, we, we're not right. You know, we're not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to mention what would be obscene, but I mean, we're not putting anything obscene on the sidewalk. There was no. There were no. There was. Was there anything on the on the sidewalk that you guys chalked that I would be embarrassed to show my ten year old daughter? Absolutely not. Okay, so so there was nothing profane. It was water water soluble. 
Well, I mean, unless he was from China. <laughs> Or 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 uh, if you uh, really don't like Aristotle, right? So, um, there was. Uh, I'm just trying to think of what you guys would have got. It sprayed right off. Yeah, it comes right off with with water. Um, you know, it, it can be cleaned off. As I said, we we've been making our own chalk. We figured out a cheap, easy way. How to did make it, chalk. how did the police know about it? Did someone call the police? Was there a complaint? We don't know yet. I mean, we're... we're well, you'll, you'll have a, you have a right to know if there's a complaint. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and FOIA requests will probably be sent to the police department. As of right now, we're, we're still trying to figure out our... Have you been charged or just arrested? I, I don't even know because I don't even understand if we were arrested. I mean, we, as I said, we were handcuffed and detained. We were right. told we were under arrest, but then we were given a city ordinance violation. Okay. So, so, I mean, I guess we have been charged with the ordinance violation, um, but I, I don't... Is I, there a deadline to... On your violation, is there a deadline to pay? I am not sure. Okay. You guys need to check that because you might not actually be... I, I don't want to get... We do have a court date on February okay. 1st. All right. And have you met with uh, at least a public defender or somebody? Or? Uh, not as of yet. Um, have you met with a lawyer? We are talking to a okay. number of attorneys right now, yes. Yeah. Well, get, pick one. Pick one and have them make this go away. Well, I, and... Because I have a feeling. I have a feeling. I, I'm not sure. I just... It sounds to me like th this is going to... This sounds to me uh, like it is something that will go away. It, it, are you guys under the impression that it's going to go away, or do you, are you under the impression you're going to have to pay the $500 fine? I don't know yet. I, I do not know yet. Right. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say yes, it'll go away. No, it won't. We we just don't know. There's we can't find any precedent for this really. Yeah. So I don't, I'm just saying on the, on the service to me, it sounds like they just wanted you to stop, and that was the way to get you to stop. Well, yeah, it doesn't seem like they're enforcing any letter of the law. They were enforcing who called, the wills. Who called out the fire department to spray this off? The police department, the lieutenant in charge at the scene of the crime, was calling the shots. Yeah. So we, we don't, as I said, we've been allowed to chalk around Springfield for about a month now. So, But ch you did a chase. They never called chase the police. Chase Bank, U.S. Bank. Well, police were called, but... When the police would show up, nobody was arrested. No right. one was ever handcuffed and detained. Like but when it was in front of Aaron Schock's office is when it... Absolutely. Absolutely. And don't get me wrong. Aaron Schock is a very sexy man, as the cover of Men's Health magazine yes. shows. Uh, I, I don't know where he Aaron finds... Aaron Schock could have gone out there and he could have... <laughs> he could have power washed... And he he could have used his, his abs to scrub that off. I mean, I tell you, those abs, I don't know where he finds time to work on those in between his busy legislative he's, schedule. He that, must be very shocked. He's blessed with good DNA. He's a young guy. He has time. One of the best-looking congressmen out there, probably. He's an attractive man. Well, but he, he's never here. Well, I don't understand why. If you wanted him to see it, why would you chalk there? should have chalked up north. Well, uh, I mean... The if you want Aaron Schock to see your sidewalk chalk, my suggestion is go chalk in Peoria. Do not chalk here because he's never here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I mean, however, he is here. He does have an office here. His office and, is and, here, yeah. I, and why he maintains an office in Springfield, I, I mean... Well, he has to. He's... he's Right. He covers part of this area. So, I mean, we, we are Occupy Springfield. Right. We're not Occupy Peoria. I understand so that. So we, we, we play to what we can here. So we're the you know the, the situation that we could create was having a protest in front of his office there. Our main goals are to raise awareness, right. educate, and empower people. Sure. Um, this isn't necessarily, I mean, and I think to that end, what we did has been very effective at raising awareness at the very least uh, somewhat about HR 3340. Six and bringing that into sure. the light. No, they need to work on this. They need to work on this. Let me ask you guys a couple of things. While, while I got you here, let me ask you a couple of things. Sure. Can I ask you something first? Sure, Ray? go right ahead. Are you a god? Am I a god? I am not a god, no. Ray! When someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. All right. Give me an open shot to quote Ghostbusters. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> really? That's what you want to... You get a chance to ask me something and you quote Ghostbusters. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What do you think the perception is of Occupy Springfield? Well, at, from people who aren't part of the... You know, from people who aren't part of it, what do you think the perception is? 
I think there's a there's a percep there's a lot of perceptions uh, that are shared about the Occupy movement as a right. whole. We are undisciplined, unorganized. We're dirty hippies that don't right. know what we're doing. We're just sort of blindly protesting things. And, and honestly. I've never been prouder to be a dirty hippie in my life, right. if that's really the case, because we are not unorganized, we are not undisciplined, we do know what we're doing. I think the level of thought that we put into Operation Shock Chalk shows how, how right. much we think through the situations that we go through. And you see, they, they say that you don't have a message, but you seem to have a message. Message is, here's a bill, we want you to vote. Yes, on this bill to continue with unemployment benefits. And, and what I tell—that's a pretty clear message. What I tell people, Occupy Springfield is, is an, in a nutshell, to sort of wrap their minds around it, is that we are a small local grassroots organization dedicated to raising awareness about social justice issues. So whatever falls under that umbrella of social justice, that is something that we will take up. Do you have a job? Yes, I work for the Park District. So you have a job. Uh, the other guys that are in the movement, do they also have jobs? Plenty of them have jobs. Because it, it, there is a perception problem, and everybody thinks this is a bunch of unemployed, entitled punks living in their parents' basements. And I'm saying, I've seen the videos. You guys don't look like a bunch of entitled punks no. that are doing things. I see people of all ages and people who are employed but are sick of some of the injustices going on. I, 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 don't get me wrong. I've seen pictures of the Occupy movement around the country. And, yeah, there's some embarrassing stuff. You guys, I think you guys have done, I think you've done a decent job of, of trying to at least keep the perception on this is what we really are. Yeah. But I also think you need to do things like I just asked you guys if you had jobs. You go, yeah, I got a job. Here's my job. Yeah. Uh, they, you, they need to put that stuff out there. I, w I will say I'm laid off from the park district right now. And, right. But So technically I would be unemployed. But I, for the last four or five years I've been working for the park district. I want to seem like I'm deceiving anybody. No, no. But I work very, very hard six, seven months out of the year. And then during the winter I'm laid off and I have to scrap and scramble right. to, to find whatever I can to make ends meet. So I'm very well from – But then you're called back to work in the absolutely. spring. Absolutely. Every every year, and this is a this is an ongoing pattern. Right. I will not be I in no way would be affected by the bill that we're supporting. I, there are a whole lot of people that have dutifully paid into the system, have been boons to the economy, buying consumer goods for many years, and because of some poor finance years and loose politics, people are losing their jobs yeah. that have paid into this system for a long time, and now they're being left out in the cold by people like Aaron Shock, who continues to. You know, block this bill from going through, uh, and his friend Boner, uh, you know, John Boner. And I would like Shock not to be a boner in this situation. I would like Shock to vote for HR 3346. Uh, and because there are people that need this, and I don't know how much she has in common with somebody that's worked construction guys, for 20 years. Are you guys gonna uh, chalk anymore, or are you gonna go back to signs and? Well, I, I can say that I have no intent to chalk in the near future based on my current situation, but I right. will say this. There is chalk out there. We have developed a method for making your own chalk. Uh, some people call it freedom chalk. Now we're calling it shock chalk. Right. And we do have a video on our website, OccupySpringfieldIL.org. It's connected there. Uh, it's connected to our YouTube account that shows you how to make chalk pretty easily using... And this is water-soluble Water-soluble using plaster of Paris, tempera paint, um, and uh, plastic tubes as well as male prophylactics to oh, pour just, the mold into. So we, it just seems like a lot of work. <laughs> Well, as, as I just I just go to the Toys R Us and buy the stuff for my daughter. Well, you know, when you're trying to make a lot of chalk, it helps to do it yourself. And, That's and, true. I'll give you that. And I'll tell you one thing: Occupy Springfield is a DIY operation all the way. We try not to buy things; we try to make them ourselves. Yeah. Well, you guys, uh, good luck with this with this, with the chalk thing. I um, it, it, I don't know. I mean, you'll you'll check one with a lawyer, but it sounds to me like. I'm not sure anything's going to come of that. I mean, you, you, I think you guys, can, I think you can get out of it. In other words, well, I, I, I think the more important thing out of of any of this is not to have the charges dropped. It's not to, um, it's not really to go. It's it's not really. Well, we we don't we don't have a time machine. We can't go back in time and keep them from to keep them from right blocking your speech but which i which in my opinion i think that's what they were doing um right. I, I, I i no i i think you have the right in this country you have the right in this country 
to do what you're doing. You guys have the right to do it. I people might not agree with it, but that's tough. If they don't, I, I, I always say this, and I had an argument the other day with somebody talking about this who they completely disagreed with the Occupy movement, and they said that it was uh, un-American and they didn't like it. And they, and here's what I say to people who don't like, to people who who don't like uh, protesting. What I say is move to another country because in the United States we allow it. With this is it's one of the it's one of the things that we have in this country that makes us better than everybody else. We're so proud of being better than everybody else. There's one of those things. We have always had the freedom and hopefully we always will have the freedom to do this. And uh, you know, if you don't like protesting, t- you might not agree with protesting. But by God, we have the right to do it. Well, you guys weren't intentionally trying to get arrested, were you? Absolutely not. No, we're not. We're not trying to get arrested. I, I something I, I said at the council meeting last night that I'd like to bring up again is that we are not an organization of vast financial resources. We have to rely on our creativity and our ingenuity. We cannot afford television and radio advertising. We cannot afford to put our message on a billboard. We cannot afford to hire a lobbyist to push this message through to the congressmen and the senators that will listen. So we, all we really have is our right to free speech and our ability to to go out and spread our message in any way that we possibly can i wish you luck you guys uh, you guys Thanks, always Ray. you guys are always peaceful i you know you never hear of you guys do nobody's pooping on a police car like they did in new york city no our guys here they seem respectful they put on nice demonstrations and you guys at least you we have a in this town our occupiers which are better than other cities occupiers you guys have a clear message, and your message right now, the message you guys are pushing right now is, it, what's, give them the bill number. H.R. 3346. Which is a bill currently in yeah. the House of Representatives that you guys want our local representatives to vote yes on because it extends unemployment benefits. So those of you people that say they don't have a clear message, I don't know what they're standing for. I, he just gave you the bill number. If you want to know what they're standing for, there you go. And also... Um, power and money. I know you don't like uh, unlimited campaign financing and things like that. Mm-hmm. Let's get the money out of politics yeah. is what I say. Right now, you guys are pushing HR. Uh, HR, what is it? 336? 3346. 3346. HR 3346. And if I could say something about Occupy Spring, and personally, what I... I am... I consider myself a regular guy. I love life. I love my family, and I love my friends. And, in fact, I think I love the entire world. I know I love the entire world. And that's what drives most of us is that love. It's that compassion and empathy for other human beings that makes us so determined to try and make the world a better place. I don't think a better world is just possible. I think it's necessary. Well, you sound like a hippie there. But I'll give that to you. It's, it's actually a pretty nice thought, and I, I, agree with, uh, I agree with that same sentiment. I think, I think a lack of empathy is one of the most troubling aspects of current America. I, I really, I, and I'm saying that... I was really impressed I'm by saying that. that right now. A lack of empathy is one of the biggest problems we have in this country. Uh, people, I, I am disgusted when I hear people refer to everybody that's unemployed as being lazy, everybody that's on welfare as being someone wanting to... Uh, Rip off the system. I am disgusted by. I'm disgusted by people painting with these wide brushes of every single person who has a, a certain skin color being this, or every single person of having a religious uh, uh, background of being this or that. And uh, I am disgusted when they they paint such broad, when they use such such broad strokes to define people and I think empathy is something we need more of and as long as you guys continue with empathy as being uh, you know one of your core belief, one of your core emotions that you show I'm all for you guys well, well, one of my uh, my great hopes is that one day uh, we can all roam the infinite consciousness of love and empathy together forever and ever <laughs> you sound like a hippie again as I said Ray I don't think I've ever been prouder to be a hippie in my life listen I thank you good luck uh, Occupy Springfield Occupy Springfield dot 
OccupySpringfieldIL.org. Okay. Okay. If I could do a plug, Friday night we're having a teach-in at uh, the Artist Colony, the pharmacy. Uh, it's a great outfit there. On Friday night at 6 o'clock we will be having Dr. Richard Gilman Opalski speak and teach, uh, do a teach-in on revolution and insurrection. So if it, we, we are having teach-ins on a regular basis as well. As I said, one of our goals is to educate people. Listen, more go out people. there. Um, make sure to let people know you have jobs. Dress nice. Be respectful. And uh, best of luck to you. Thanks, Ray. All right. We'll be back with more of The Real Idol Show in a moment on 970 WMAY, the News and Talk Springfield.